Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media, and this video is a content strategy framework that really combines a lot of the best stuff that we know about digital. Uh, I'm going to connect all the dots through to the very end, uh, showing how, in a lot of ways, your website and your digital marketing are sort of a bridge from Google.com to your website's thank you page. Lead generation, creating demand. Why do some sites do it so well? Some content programs are so effective and create so many leads, and other content marketing programs and strategies never really get there. I want to start by explaining a myth and something that we hear a lot that doesn't really make sense to me or work that well. It sounds like this. Keep on blogging. That's sort of what they say. Uh, you'll get enough traffic from search and social and email, and visitors will move from your blog posts and content marketing content over to your service pages and coincidentally need your help that day, after which they go to the About page, build some trust, fill out your contact form, and make it to the Thank You page. Doesn't really happen that often or that well. Uh, if you look at your analytics for any, actually any B2B service company, in my experience, people who start their visit on a sales page or a service page uh, are 50 times more likely to convert into a lead than people who start their visit on a blog post. I created this by building just two simple segments in Google Analytics, people that start their visit on one type of page or another type of page, and I see this a lot. It's just not that likely that visitors to a blog post ever really need your services or are that likely to turn into a lead. So what is the mechanic that makes content marketing so effective. What If this isn't it, then what does work? Well, content marketing is critical partly because it gives the world something to link to. It improves your domain authority indirectly by having link-worthy content. If you look at Google Search Console to see what people have been linking to on your website, you'll probably see something like this. It's all the blog posts because people almost never link to service pages. Why would they? They're basically ads but people link to helpful, useful content all the time. So this is an SEO-driven content framework. Because those links and authority flow through the navigation on your website to every other page, improving the likelihood of ranking of your service pages, improving the domain authority of your entire website. And that's what you need. You get blog readers all the time, that's lovely, but to get qualified visitors who actually need our help to visit our service pages, those are the people who are 50 times more likely to become leads. That's the job. That's the game. That's one of the main reasons to do content marketing is to combine it with SEO to attract links. Links attract authority. Authority is what's going to help our service pages rank. When those pages rank, we attract qualified visitors, and those qualified visitors are the ones who actually may become leads. So I'm going to do this as an example. I'm going to do it for an office coffee delivery company. We're making up a business here. We're calling it Speedy Bean. This is an actual content strategy framework for an office coffee delivery company, and it starts with the core. It starts at the beginning, which is the nucleus of this demand gen program, the search optimized, conversion optimized sales page. It is optimized to convert by targeting key phrase that it has a chance of ranking for. Let's start by checking the difficulty of the target key phrase, office coffee delivery. I'm using the Moz Link Explorer. It's a paid tool, but there's free ways to get these insights. What we're looking for is an idea of the general difficulty for the key phrase. In other words, the pages that rank high for that phrase have how much authority. In this case, it looks like an average of the authority of the pages that rank. Put this in the range of about 20 out of 100. In other words, the sites that rank are of medium to low authority. What is our authority? Speedy Bean Coffee has a domain authority of 16. so. Office Coffee Delivery Service is a little bit out of reach. That's why we're building a content strategy that is going to power SEO and have links and authority in mind. But the other part about this page is that it is conversion optimized. So it leverages human psychology. Visitors come with questions. Our job is to answer their questions. Unanswered questions kill conversion rates. Unaddressed objections kill conversion rates. And then we support those answers with evidence testimonials, social proof, any kind of evidence we can. Finally, that page has to have clear, compelling, specific calls to action. A page without a CTA is, of course, not going to convert as well. The next part of our content strategy is the mission. It's the foundation. So it's very simple. The idea is just to document who you're talking to, what you talk about, and why they care. Your content, as in your blog, your newsletter, everything in your social streams, is where audience X gets information Y for benefit Z. 
It's a fun exercise to do. Content strategists love this kind of thing. Uh, it's fun. So you'd think everyone would do it. In fact, only 39% of companies have a documented content strategy, according to the Content Marketing Institute Marketing Profs B2B Content Survey. Yet those that do are twice as likely to report success in their content. That's not weird at all, because one of the benefits of having a good documented mission statement is that it can be adapted into a great call to action. Just look at these two email signups. This is for Speedy Bean. Get fun weekly workplace tips, because no one loves a boring office. That gives me a reason to sign up. It's a call to action that's specific and indicates a benefit in a topic. I'm going to get workplace tips, and they're fun. Look at the one next to it. Boring, generic, ineffective. It says nothing. Yet you see these all over the internet. People who just make newsletter sign up, submit. Just there's nothing, nothing about it that would compel that visitor to take action. It doesn't tell them what they're going to get. It makes no promises. Our content mission statement for Speedy Bean is this. We are where office managers find fun tips for the workplace to build happier, more productive teams. Quite simple. Part three in our seven-step process is to publish original research. It is an all-powerful format for content. Research has shown this. Steve Rayson from, from BuzzSumo did analysis on a million articles and found that most content doesn't really get any links or shares. <laughs> it performs not very well at all. And what Steve concludes is that if you want to create content that achieves a high level of both shares and links, then you should concentrate on one of two things, opinion-forming authoritative content or well-researched and evidenced content. In other words, strong opinions and original research. Again, go back and look at Search Console and see who's been linking to things in your content. If you've ever published original research, you'll likely find that it dominates uh, the top pages in terms of link attraction. These are the pages that are eminently link-worthy because original research uh, it supports other people's messages and citing it, a simple citation, a link back attribution for the original source of that data is totally normal and uh, simple best practices. So there's three ways you can publish original research. We've talked a lot about this in the past. There's other posts on our site that explain this in detail. You can do observation by either just picking a data set and analyzing the data, or by aggregation, you can combine data from other data sources to produce research and data that is new and somewhat original, or the mass outreach and analysis on big, on big outreach data, such as a survey, which is powerful because you can produce data that is otherwise uh, unavailable without talking to people. But regardless of the approach, your, I, your job here is to find the missing statistic. Find that missing stat. When you find a missing stat, you have contributed to your industry. You've made yourself the primary source. You are uh, really adding to the conversation. So we highly recommend publishing original research. It is just that effective. Yet, most people don't do it. When we asked 1,000 bloggers if they published original research, in the last 12 months, only 25% of them said yes probably because it's really hard to do. It's like 10 times the effort. Uh, but in our experience, it is 100 times the results. And when we ask those 1,000 bloggers if they got results, uh, the people who have published original research were three times as likely to report strong results from their own content. The fourth step in the process is to write for our prospects, write for people who are currently in our sales funnel, if at all possible. Uh, this is gonna force you to be empathetic as a content marketer. So for Speedy Bean, I ride along on some sales calls, I'm listening in on some phone calls, and I learn that people keep asking, do I have to get a coffee grinder? Or why should we switch to whole bean coffee? Or my team really likes those instant K-cups. Okay, I'm seeing a common objection or a concern or a question. And if I analyze the conversations happening with our prospects, I'll learn that there's lots of commonality. A lot of people who come in have, com have these specific questions. So my job is now to answer the questions of those people. If I don't do this, I'm going to be missing uh, important content opportunities. So when people ask me, uh, do I really need a coffee grinder? My answer won't be, good question, I'll just explain here on the call. My answer will be, I'm glad you asked, I'm sending you a link. And then they get an article from me that explains in extreme detail all the information about uh, the life change, in this case, the life changing benefits of whole bean coffee, freshly ground each morning. Now my prospect sees it in a format that they can pass along to other decision makers. Very important for B2B lead gen. The idea is to never waste a good conversation by having it in private. It's really a mistake to answer each sales question one-on-one -on -one or with the same email over and over without publishing that as content. Huge missed opportunity. 
So what great content marketers have learned, especially in B2B, is that when the prospect asks a question, the sales team answers that question, but then needs to pass the topic along to the marketing team because the marketing team can then write an article that supports that answer, uh, answers that question, and then give that as an email they can forward along as a, uh, to the sales team and share with the next prospect. Beyond text, we need to go beyond text. We're going to upgrade our content to visuals whenever possible because text is not the strongest format for content. If that was a successful article, I'm going to recreate it as an infographic. Here is the whole bean ground coffee smack down. 10 reasons why you need to get whole bean coffee, assuming that's what part of my value proposition. Whatever is outperforming the other content, I want to upgrade to visuals because there are laws of visual hierarchy. And things that are large are obviously more prominent than things that are small. Things that are high on the page are more prominent than things lower on the page. Contrast is important. Color is important. But look at the format. Movement in video is, has more visual prominence than images and icons, which has more visual prominence than text. So we should always be looking for opportunities to go beyond text. It's critical. There are no super successful content marketing programs that lack visuals or a strategy for, for images and, and video. And it's the surefire success formula. Turn your top X into a Y. In that case, I turned my top blog post into an infographic. Better yet, turn it into a video. Or turn your top three articles into a guide. Or whatever your best Facebook post was, make that into your next newsletter. Repurposing content is an absolutely amazing tactic that we should never miss, especially when it's upgrading formats such as text to images. Larry Kim makes this point a lot. He says everything we publish is either a unicorn or a donkey. One of the main goals for analytics is to find those unicorns and then make baby unicorns. Cutest metaphor ever. Next, we're going to collaborate with influencers. The idea there is to build trust, improve the quality of our content. We can increase traffic. And the bloggers who do collaborate with influencers are the most likely to report strong results from their content. The way in which this supports lead generation may not be obvious. But bottom line, you want a lead. You, to get a lead, you need two things. You need visitors, and you need to convert those visitors. You need traffic and a conversion rate. But which source of traffic is the most likely to become a lead? Is it search or social or email? It's actually search because those visitors have strong intent. They searched for something. They typed it on a keyboard. They need your help. So the goal there, of course, is to rank. So why do sites rank? How do we get our page to rank? Well, we need two things. Links and content, as in authority and relevance, the two main search ranking factors. So we get to the most important question in all of digital, right? Why do people link to things? Well, basically, you need to have content that's link worthy. We already covered that, original research, and relationships with people who create links, right? Influencers, content creators, bloggers, authors, journalists, editors. It's really important to have relationships with content creators if we ever expect to drive enough authority to get those sales pages to rank to create a steady stream of qualified visitors. And they're easy to find. Here's a Twitter search tool. I'm searching for office managers, perfect for my audience, plus blogger, writer, or author. Make sure to add one of those words so that you find people who are content creators. People who create content create links, and that is going to support our long-term SEO goals. Buzzsumo is another great way to do this. You can search for influencers with filters such as bloggers, influencers, and journalists. Now, the way to collaborate with these people is the fun part. You can reach out to them and ask for a contributor quote. You could include a group of them in a roundup where you ask them each a question or set of questions. Find one superstar content expert, subject matter expert, and do a deep dive interview. You can ask someone for a guest post or you can pitch a guest post for their site. But in the long run, the idea is to get them into your content. Share ideas about content with that group. Include some of them in there as contributor quotes in the article with faces and names. It makes your content more credible, improves the quality, and it improves the social sharing because they're more likely to help you promote, right? Collaborative content is just going to have a larger audience because it has more people involved. Bottom line, an ally in creating content is an ally in promoting content. So everyone does it, right? Nope. Only 18% of B2B brands have ongoing influencer marketing campaigns. Bottom line, guys, if you're not making friends, you're doing it wrong. So the seventh and last piece of our content strategy framework is to do outreach and writing for other websites. We just touched on this. Take two marketers, two content programs, two strategies. Content program A writes two articles. 
Program B writes two articles and pitches one to an editor. Yellow in this case is our off-site publishing. Now that post is going to link back to the original in the author bio if nowhere else. And they get another writer to contribute an article. Now there's two articles on the website from two different authors and one piece is on another website. So we have three pieces of content associated with our brand, a link back to our site, two friends. Round two, it's a linear progression you can imagine here, but look, round four, nice blog buddy, but this is what great web marketing looks like. More friends, more links, more social shares, more content. So powerful, so effective, yet only 60% of bloggers ever write guest posts. I've been doing content a very long time, but to this day, one third of my articles are still written for other websites. Why wouldn't I? The chance to collaborate with expert authors, it's fun, it's effective, and it's friendship. Highly recommended. Uh, get off your own site and write for other sites. Makes a big, big difference. Okay, ready? We're gonna put it all together. Let's do this. I'm gonna show you an example for Speedy Bean, the office coffee delivery service, a content strategy framework built specifically to drive search and leads. Keeping in mind that there are two kinds of visitors. Remember, the transactional visitors need a product or service. They need office coffee delivery. They are 50 times more likely to convert. But then of course, the vast majority of visitors are just looking for answers. Transactional visitors search for commercial intent keywords, the dollar sign phrases. The information visitors are just looking for information and they are question mark key phrases. Commercial intent, information intent. So we have two kinds of pages on our website. There's the products and service pages. This is the, the brochure part of the website. It's search optimized and conversion optimized. And then there's the helpful, useful section, the blogs where we have all the helpful information. They drive two types of visitors. These people likely to become leads. These people might just subscribe or follow or maybe link back to us. We need to get the, the authority here to ever get these pages to rank. So we have to build the mousetrap first, Barry Feldman's metaphor. If your website is the mousetrap, the content's the cheese. So we're gonna start by building that core, that mousetrap. That's our office coffee delivery service page. It is a red dot on this thing. I'm gonna build a framework. And uh, it has answers and testimonials and calls to action. We talked about the framework for conversion. Then the pillar, the main piece, the center of the hub, the original research. And I'm gonna reach out to 50 different workplaces, ask them what kind of office perks they have. It's a lot of phone time. It's, it takes a bunch of work, but I will end up with a legitimate study that shows what the top perks are at the top offices. It's got charts and data and quotes from influencers. And then if you want to, you can subscribe. Visitors can get the content upgrade. Maybe they want it in a, in a more printable version or a more detailed analysis. So I've got a piece of gated content potentially in this program. Now I'll write the how-to article, how to retain your top employees. This is a keyword focused article as well. It's got charts and data and links back to the anchor piece. And I will pitch as a guest post, a how not to article, a mistakes, I publish the best practices. Now I'm gonna publish mistakes and pitch that to an editor. I call this the evil twin, how to lose an employee. It's, uh, it's reaching out to authoritative websites, uh, linking back to the original or linking back to the, the research. And then turning that research, of course, turning that research into an infographic or something more visual, maybe a video about the top perks, the top offices, basically a, a repurposing version of my larger research piece. And that also makes a great guest post. That's a great pitch. Would you be interested in running this? I've got an article to go with it. It'd be great for your audience. Uh, new data. Uh, very likely that that would get accepted. Time to find some influencers to collaborate, do an interview about employee retention, find some uh, HR uh, authority that I can talk to, the credible person, and pitch myself as an influencer, maybe to a podcast. Hey, do you want to talk about this research? It just came out recently. would love to... Uh, share it with your audience. Uh, in my experience, podcasters are not swamped with at, with submissions. So it could be good white space, an opportunity there. Uh, if you talk about the research, of course, you're going to link back to the research in their show notes. They'll certainly link back to you. They normally would. And then finally, we're just going to do some blogging. Five workplace secrets inside the top offices. Coffee, tea, or beer? What are they drinking at the top offices? Or the dirt on dishes? What's wrong with office kitchens? So this plan obviously went far beyond regular blogging, but I'm going to support it with more content. This is the difference. That's it. Can you feel it? Red is the core, the service page, the sales page, conversion and search optimized. The big dot in the middle is my research, and I'm publishing in other formats, publishing in other places, publishing with different people. And how often could I do this? 
my framework, I maybe could repeat this quarterly, right? Full-time marketer could put this kind of plan together and do it on a consistent basis, you know, and you've got your upgrade, you've got your media collaborations and PR, some guest posts to support it. So remember, how much authority do I have? Uh, how difficult is the phrase? Office coffee delivery, not the easiest phrase to rank for. The other high-ranking pages uh, seem to have more credibility than me in general. They're all kind of in the mid-20s for domain authority uh, with 100-plus linking websites. Uh, how much authority did I have? I think my authority was like 16 out of 100. That's my starting point. I've got 42 websites linking to me. So how long would it take me to create a consistent flow of qualified leads? Let's say each round of this research produced 10 or 20 links. I would have 100 plus incoming links certainly by the end of the year. I started at 40, right? You could just imagine how this would work. I think I'm going to be victorious and create a consistent stream of qualified visitors and leads through this strategy by the end of the year. That's my prediction. I'm very sure of it, actually. No doubt at all I'd be successful in that time with a plan this comprehensive. Because, like, like only 39% of companies, I am research-driven. Like only 25% of companies, my strategy is anchored in original research. And, like only 18% of businesses, it's powered by influencers. Right? I've got credible people and experts in my content. And that outreach piece, right? only 60% of, of bloggers are doing that. So put that together. 39% times 25% times 15% times 60%. This is a strategy that really only 1% on average of content programs would include. All of those aspects. It's just not that common for people to combine these things. And it's a problem because if you don't, you're just far less likely to create the outcome you're looking for of consistent demand. In the end, there's really two kinds of content strategies. They're mission-driven, research-anchored, influencer-powered, and PR-focused strategies. And there's the 99% of people who didn't watch this video. Makes sense, doesn't it? Very powerful when used in combination. We hope this is a content strategy that you can use for your B2B program. Uh, very confident in its success for you. Uh, most people don't do it, so there's still plenty of opportunity. People say digital marketing is getting harder, but uh, in my experience, the key to beating 99% of people is just to do what they don't do. And that's exactly what we just did. I uh, hope this was useful. Uh, we'll keep publishing more of these. If you know someone, a strategist, or a, any, anyone in digital who would find this useful, I uh, would be grateful if you'd pass it along. Again, Andy from Orbit. Uh, see you next time.